couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And in this video, I want to discuss with you the three most important aspects people completely neglect when they practice. And those aspects are rhythm, playing with other people, and recording. Again, rhythm, playing with other people, and recording. And I call them aspects because they boil down to the same problem and the same result, which is a lack of awareness. And what do I mean by that? Let's start with rhythm, okay? Because that's the root of the problem. Most people, when they practice alone in the room, no matter how strict they are with themselves, they still cut themselves a lot of slack while playing, while practicing. Um, because we can, because we can cut ourselves slack while practicing. We tend to ignore many of our small rhythmical mistakes, many of the small wrong notes that we play. Um, and we start the bars, uh, you know, we start off the top again. We, we don't stop. We just repeat something that we played wrong. Um, and we just cut ourselves a lot of slack, even if we practice with a metronome or a backing track. When you play with a metronome or a backing track, you get yourself ready for playing with other people and recording, but still you're alone in your room and you can cut yourself slack whenever you want to. The backing track or the metronome won't notice. So when you practice by yourself, you do whatever you want and you just have fun with your instrument. And that changes when you have to play with another person, with a live person, because suddenly someone else is calling the shots if they play the drums, if they play guitar, if they back you up with the guitar, suddenly somebody else uh, boxes you in a time frame in uh, BPM and you can't make those small mistakes. If you make those small mistakes, you just have to move on. You can't correct them. And if you're too used to correcting them and too used to cutting yourself slack, when you play with a different, with another person, with a different guitar player or a different instrument player, um, suddenly you lose yourself and you stress out and you're frustrated over any small mistake and you want to take it off the top and you want to stop, wait, wait a second, uh, I want to catch uh, my breath and let's start again. And you might end up thinking that you're not as good as you think you are while the opposite is true. You're still as good as you think you are but you're just not used to playing with another person in the room, a live person, which keeps time. And um, there's another aspect to this, which is when you play with a different person, you have to listen to that other person. You have to listen to what they play and you have to react to it. You don't want to be selfish. You want to create the music together. So when you're used to listening to your own playing and only your own playing, you're not used to listening to the backing track and there's no use listening to the metronome. Uh, the metronome isn't a creative instrument. So um, that's another problem. That's awareness. That's the awareness that I was talking about. You need to divide your attention between your own playing and the other person playing as well as keep time together. And you need to start playing with other people as soon as possible. Even if you think you're not up to it, just get used to playing with someone else, with a live person playing a live instrument, not only a backing track, which doesn't uh, give you any feedback. Now, um, recording is a whole different animal. It's like taking that lack of awareness and multiplying it. Because when you record, you become hyper aware. Okay, and the moment the record button is on, the moment that red dot is on, you forget how to play. No matter how much you practice, no matter how many times you repeated what you're gonna record, the moment you start recording, you forget how to play. You make really, really stupid mistakes. It's really difficult to record music, really. But you have to try anyway. And if not for recording something, then to hear your own playing. Because when you're playing, you can't judge your own playing. There are a lot of small things about your playing that you don't even notice. And I don't mean that in a negative way. It might be in a very positive way. You might listen to yourself and say, wow, I sound great. I sound better than I thought. 
And yet, you have to start recording just to get used to the feeling of recording, of, of having a machine recording any little thing you play, okay? Because if you don't, then the moment you have to record, you're gonna fail miserably. And I'm not saying that to be cruel, I'm saying that because I've seen it happen way too many times, including to myself, okay? Uh, when, when the record button goes on and I have to demonstrate something, um, it's awful, I hate recording. And that's why I cut myself slack and I just cut different takes sometimes um, when I have to demonstrate something on Lick and Riff because I don't wanna waste too much time on recording I want to demonstrate it so I can get to teaching, okay? The point here is teaching. I, I, I'm not showing off my own skills. If and when I decide to make playing videos, videos of myself play, then I'm gonna go through the excruciating ordeal of actually having to tolerate the record button again. So um, everybody hates recording. Even session musicians hate recording, but session musicians are a different, a whole different breed of musician and I have no idea how they do it. They just practice all the time and they record themselves all the time just to forget that the recording machine, whatever it is, is there. And so they can be free and play while being recorded. That's very, very, very difficult. It's a lot more difficult than playing with another person because the other person might be you know, might be forgiving about your mistakes. They might not even notice your mistakes, but when you record, you have absolutely no room to maneuver. You must play um, at the highest level you can, and that's difficult. So you must practice that as well. You have to practice recording, and you have to practice playing with other people. So when the time comes and you, you want to jam with a large group of people, you don't, um, you don't overstress yourself and you don't get frustrated and you don't make too many mistakes because then you're too aware and you're too careful not to make mistakes and that's, uh, that's the number one reason of making mistakes. When you're trying not to, then you're not playing. You're just being too careful. You're not having fun. So um, rhythm, playing with other people, recording. The more you keep time, the better you'd be when you play with other people, the more comfortable you'd be, and then the more comfortable you'd be recording. But again, recording is something you have to practice, okay? I drilled that in, and now I'll let you go back to playing. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.